So thanks, Jack, for the opportunity to share some thoughts in 15 minutes about who killed Caravaggio. He died in this little seaside town of Porta Ercoli, and there's the church where the uh, reverend looked after him on his deathbed. He died of supposedly fevers and exhaustion and heat stroke because he was traveling from Naples to Rome to receive a pardon from the murder that he committed from the uh, pardon from the Pope for the murder he committed three years before. The felucca let, let him off at Palo. He was arrested uh, falsely, bribed his way out of these paintings that he was using to bribe the uh, cardinals and the Pope took off on the felucca to Port Ercole, and he walked the 100 kilometres up there to get his paintings back. He was born in this little town of Michelangelo Marisi um, in the small town of Caravaggio in that little house. Um, age of six, plague wiped out his father, his grandfather. Um, they were impoverished from then on, and it profoundly affected his attitude to authority and to life in general. He learned to paint in Milan uh, under Simone Peter Zano, and he very quickly joined the gangs they had back then. They called them the Bravi. They had mullets. They, they were very keen on sword fighting, and he became quite an accomplished sword fighter. He learned his art in Milan, but the centre of the artistic universe was Rome, and he headed there as a young man. There he is in all his glory, and when I write the screenplay, that guy's going to play Caravaggio. That's what the painting was like at the time he was painting, and he was painting these beautiful um, card sharps, fortune tellers, downing thomases, at a time when the rest of the world were painting uh, religious scenes. This guy, Cardinal Del Monte, and there's the Palazzo Madama, the, now the Senate building where he lived, discovered him almost busking on the streets, selling paintings, got in his very first important um, commission, which was this um, calling of Matthew. Pay attention to that hand, that's Jesus Christ as a, as a uh, common man. He always used live models. He uh, painted without any preparatory drawings and he borrowed the hand from the Sistine Chapel roof of Michelangelo. He was sick for a year with a hepatitic type illness, maybe syphilis, maybe malaria. And this is the sick back of self portrait that he painted after he'd been in the hospital for a year. He became very famous. Uh, his, and he also ran into trouble. His, uh, from the Louvre, the, um, the death of the Virgin. Um, this was taken down when they found out that his model for the Virgin was a, a dead prostitute fished out of the Tiber. He didn't sign his paintings, but here you can see a little self-portrait of Caravaggio. That's how he signed them. The first one who wanted him dead was Baglioni, who was an author and a painter who <coughs> um, accused Caravaggio of sodomy in a painting that he did and Caravaggio wrote all these slanderous um, poems about Baglioni. He took him to court. He was imprisoned. If you're arrested and convicted for slander, you spend the rest of your days rowing in the papal galleys. Um, his Cardinal Del Monte got him out and got the uh, charges dropped. Here's one of his paintings of Narcissus, and there's thought that this is one of the examples of juvenile inflammatory arthritis in this little child. The second person who wanted him dead was the Duke of Mantua, Vincenzo Gonzaga, whose uh, agent here, Peter Paul Rubens, had uh, negotiated a contract for a large commission, paid him a thousand scudo, which was a large sum at the time. He never delivered the painting. Here's another one of his uh, most famous works, and I introduce his girlfriend, Philida, who was a prostitute that led him into big trouble but I thought that's a very enlarged temporal artery of the old crony helping her chop the head off Polyphernes. So there's Philida, the girlfriend, and when I finish the screenplay, she'll be paid by that actress. So the third most important is Ranuccio Tomassoni. Um, he killed Ranuccio, who was a pimp for that Philida girl, um, in a duel at the site of the Royal Tennis Court, which is now a garage in Rome, and his family wanted revenge and followed Caravaggio around Italy. He escaped. Uh, it was a duel. It was a duel of passion over the um, 
over Philida. If you wanted to uh, have a duel over a woman, you attacked the man's groin and he accidentally pierced his femoral artery and killed Renuccio very quickly and then escaped. His head was on the line. Uh, any bounty hunter could um, get the reward for his death and it didn't matter whether he was alive or dead, they'd still get the reward. So he took off, he was in exile for three years. He thought that if he went to Malta and became one of the Knights of Malta, he might be able to get a pardon. So the best way is to suck up to the leader of the Knights of Malta. And he painted these two beautiful paintings and they agreed and made him the Knight of Malta. And he was going to use this painting now hangs in the letter only one he ever signed and he signed it in blood at the bottom and this painting was going to pave his way to become a knight um, but unfortunately he misbehaved shot one of the knights in an argument with a pistol and this is the letter and they put him in the bottom of that hole um, an accomplice got him out with a rope he jumped onto a felucca took off to sicily and then to naples and it was in naples where the knights of malta followed him as he had a death sentence for what he'd done in Malta. And just outside this trattoria, four unknown assailants carved his face open and uh, made him unrecognizable and nearly killed him. Um, we're not sure if that's Renuccio's family or the Knights of Malta as is suspected. And then uh, he took him a long time to recover, but he was keen to get a pardon from Pope Paul V, uh, used his influence with Cardinal Borghese, if you go to the Villa Borghese in Rome, you'll find half a dozen Caravaggios in there. He was one of his biggest patrons and he was um, arguing for a pardon when he took off on the boat to, from Naples to Rome and wound up dead on the beach in Porto Ercole. So Baglioni wanted him dead for insulting him and libel. Renuccio's family wanted revenge. The Knights of Malta had sentenced him to death for um, the crime he'd committed in Malta and escaping. The Duke of Gonzaga, uh, Duke of Mantua, uh, Vincenzo Gonzaga, wanted his money back. And then every bounty hunter in Italy wanted the reward, dead or alive. So he had a number of people after his tale. So here's the church in Porta Ercole, no grave ever found. But they noticed in this crypt there was 20 to 25 skeletons. And so the University of Ravenna carbon dated every skeleton in that crypt. And they went back to the town of Caravaggio and they um, carved a DNA typed everyone with the last name of Marisi still alive in, Car in the town of Caravaggio who may have been a descendant. Caravaggio had a brother who was a priest. They knew where he was buried, so they dug up his bones and DNA tested the bones of his brother. And they came up with one skeleton that was the closest match to the brother and to the um, descendants in the town. So they were fairly strongly of the opinion that this was Caravaggio's bones dumped into the pit after he died, into the crypt after he died. Um, so they um, then tested those bones, found he had very high lead content, as you would expect in painters using lead paint. But most interestingly, they took the dental pulp from ancient teeth where there'd been techniques to uh, sort out which ancient oral microbiomes and organisms were present. And of course, they found um, a large amount of staph, presumably, from infected wounds on his face um, between um, when he was attacked in Naples and when he got to uh, Porto Ercole. It was not all that long a period of time. Um, so the theory now is that he had an infectious cause of death with fevers um, and that it was a staff aureus death. So in conclusion, who killed Caravaggio? The Knights of Malta, strong possibility. Um, Renuccio's family, another very strong possibility. Malaria was everywhere. He had a febrile death. Typhoid fever from drinking swamp water on the way north, 100 kilometres that he had to trudge in the, in the heat. But it's most likely that it was Golden Staff that uh, was the culprit. 
from the infected facial wounds inflicted by the four masked men who attacked him outside the Trattoria in Rome, in um, pa sorry, in Naples. And um, here's one of the paintings that he was going to use to uh, get his pardon. And here's David looking very um, sad and sorry for chopping the head off Goliath. And this is a self-portrait of Caravaggio and the uh, visage of Goliath. And he was offering his head to the Pope to give him a pardon. Thanks very much for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you.